Hello everybody and welcome to another Python series. Uh, this series is going to be dedicated to robotics with Python. So one of the coolest things I think you can do with programming is bring your programming to life physically through robotics. Uh, so with that we're going to do use our Raspberry Pi and uh, do some robotics with it. So notably most people use the Arduino for robotics. Uh, just really the Arduino is just older and more mature than the Raspberry Pi. Um, but I think the Raspberry Pi is definitely a serious contender for robotics, especially because the Raspberry Pi uh, has more uh, software ability, at least easier, than the Arduino has. So the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi are actually two very different things, right? The, the Arduino is just a controller. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is a computer, so they're, they kind of do two totally different things. Um, it just so happens that the Raspberry Pi has GPI, GPIO pins, and we can use them. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started talking about the things that we need. All right, so obviously uh, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you want Raspbian installed. If you use Noobs to install uh, Raspbian, you should already have RPI GPIO installed. I will put a the command in the description. However, run that command. Make sure you actually do have uh, GPIO installed so we can control the GPIO pins uh, via Python. So you'll need that. You'll need a battery pack uh, because the Raspberry Pi supplies a max of 3.3 volts, uh, which is uh, obviously not enough. Uh, most motors want at least double that. So you want a battery pack for that. And once you do that, you're going to need uh, a board to control that. And our choice of board is this H-Bridge. Um, see if we can get it to focus on it. There we go. Um, this board is specifically the L298N. This one's made by SaneSmart. Depending on where you buy it, uh, the actual architecture, well not the, I guess architecture is a bad word, but the structure of it uh, might be slightly different, but you should be able to buy any L298N and follow along with us. Again, this one's from SaneSmart. Came with a kit that I bought, and I will put the links and talk more about that kit in a second. Also, um, you'll need a motor and wheels. The wheels come with the motor usually. You can buy these on eBay, like four of these for 10 bucks or something, so pretty cheap. Uh, my only complaint about these is they're pretty weak, but for your first project, they're okay. Uh, the other things that you're going to need, you're going to want to have some wiring. Um, black and red helps uh, just to keep yourself sane. Um, and then obviously you're going to want some wire cutters and wire strippers so you can strip the end of the wires. Um, along with wires, you're going to want both uh, male to female. And then also you want some female to female, most likely, jumper wires. Uh, so I suggest you get uh, those. And then from there, um, and then just as an aside, if you don't have female to female, it's okay. Uh, you can always use um, two male to females, cut off the male part, and splice the two together. Um, so that's that. There's also like female adapters that you can slide onto the end of a male to female or even you can just use regular wires and wrap them around and do whatever you want. Uh, for this in the basics we're not going to do any soldering. Um, eventually you do want to do some soldering uh, just so your connections are a lot more secure but since this is your first little kit that you're putting together I don't really suggest you use any soldering just because you're probably going to take it apart and do something else with it. Um, so I wouldn't really suggest it. So I would just use regular wires and have some electrical tape or something to wrap it up. So with that, uh, that should be all the basics that you need. Obviously, you're going to want like some sort of frame for your car. Again, I bought a kit. You can buy that kit on Sane Smart uh, and get all the parts that you need for like 40 bucks, and then buy the bridge for I think it's like nine bucks. But you can also go to eBay, buy the bridge, buy the motors, buy the battery pack. Um, and then go to like Sears and you can just you can build the frame yourself you know so you can get the parts and they have you know holes in them and you can you could build the frame if you wanted on your own I just thought it'd be easiest to use the frame plus I didn't have the battery pack the motors and anything else so I thought might as well go for it so uh, I will put links in the description for that stuff um, next the only other thing I'll add I think before I uh, conclude this for parts that you need uh, I would suggest you get one of these. I'll put the link in the description for this. Edimax, uh, it's a wireless adapter for your Pi. Uh, you just want one that doesn't require any driver installations for the most part. This one, plug and play. So definitely highly recommend it. Um, also, um, you'll want a, one of these. Uh, it's just a portable power supply for the Pi. Uh, this is an anchor and I bought the 3000. Um, but it supplies 5 volts at 1,000 milliamps, so that's exactly what we wanted. 
and I have no idea how long it lasts, but it lasts more than an hour. Um, <laughs> so that's as good as I have for now for you. Um, but that's pretty good, so it'll power your Pi for more than an hour. And these, I'm not really sure if you ran the motor. Um, I've definitely logged probably an hour's worth on the motors, though. And I did just check. This one has, like, you know, those little things you can push on the battery to see how much juice it still has. And it was still 100%. So um, apparently this will last a while, too, because these motors are sissy motors. So those are the parts that you need. Um... And really, that's that's it for now. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is controlling this motor. The idea of this H-bridge is that not only can you control the motor with it using the battery pack for power, but with the H-bridge, what you can do is not only make the motor go, but you can reverse the motor if the motor is capable of, of reverse. So we can make the motor go forward or go backward or not go. Um, so that's obviously very helpful. Um, so yeah, so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. We'll be actually programming um, our motor, and then from there we'll program all the motors together to work, you know, in synchronization so they can turn and all that. Because we don't have anything that's gonna like pivot the wheel for us. Um, so yeah, so that'll be a, a whole lot of fun. It'll be a hoot. So <laughs> anyway, uh, that's at with this video. That's what you have to look forward to in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.